All right, hello everybody and welcome to my April 2023 reading wrap up. So I just have two books for you today. Dane reads. The first is Matilda, How to Be Brave by Roald Dahl, 3.5 out of 5. Very fun little expansion to Matilda, uh, lots of like trivia, quizzes, chat about the characters, all of that stuff, some of the Quentin Blake illustrations, a lot of space for you to write your own stuff in as well. Uh, good for kids, I mean I still enjoyed it as an adult and Matilda isn't even my favourite Roald Dahl book, so yeah, 3.5 out of 5. And then I read Slaughterhouse 5 by Kurt Vonnegut. Um, I've been meaning to get to this for ages, finally saw it in a charity shop. Strong 4 out of 5 for me, um, kind of anti-war, um, anti-establishment in a lot of ways as well. It's Vonnegut doing what he does best. Uh, it's actually quite funny as well, but also poignant. Um, and just some really interesting stuff about the bombing of Dresden. I, I have done a full review of this, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But yes, definitely recommended. I think uh, if you like the kind of stuff I like to read, you'll like Slaughterhouse 5. All right, wrap-up time. I have a whole little stack of books to talk to you about. So we're going to try and go through these in order. So I read Breakfast of Champions by Kurt Vonnegut. This was a solid 4.5 out of 5. Definite contender for one of my books of the year. Um, it's just really beautifully done. It's hard to categorise under a single genre because it covers a lot of different stuff. Um, but as you can see, I did a whole lot of tabs uh, that I'll be doing a full review of soon. I also really like that it has a lot of these illustrations by Vonnegut in. And they're often like referred to directly in the text. You couldn't really have one, you know, the book without them. Because it'll say something like, uh, yeah, when the Germans were full of bad chemicals, their flag looked like this. So uh, really cool stuff, the drawing of a butthole there. Let me see if I can find that for you. As a butthole. So yeah, really good stuff. Uh, I read Whipping Star by Frank Herbert. This one was just okay, like a week three out of five. Um, this mostly takes the form of a conversation between a human being and like, not an AI, but like a sentient or a non-sentient creature-y thingy. What does it say? Uh, insubstantial entities known as Calibans. Um, yes. And then the last Caliban is being tortured and shit. Um, but yeah, a lot of it is just conversations with something that doesn't understand tenses and context and all of this stuff so it's a bit of a chore because of that um, but I understand what he was doing with it and it, it comes before the Desardi experiment so you know which I was in particularly enjoy uh, then I picked, read some books I got from the charity shop so I read Opposites by Roald Dahl uh, illustrated by Quentin Blake so uh, yes just a cute little book to teach kids the opposites so like outside inside high low all of that stuff uh, 3.5 out of 5. I read uh, You Made Me Late Again by Pam Ayres, my new collection. So this is some Pam Ayres poetry plus some uh, little mini essays that talk about the poems themselves. Um, I'm going to read you one so you can get a feel for if you'd like Pam Ayres. The Terrifying Toaster. Our Labrador is nervous of the toaster. When we use it, she is paralysed with fright. And it doesn't make the slightest bit of difference whether we use wholemeal granary or white. We used to hope she'd scare away intruders and bark at burglars, that would have been nice. But no, we have to put our arms around her and say, don't worry, only one more slice. So yeah, 3.5 out of 5. I do like Pam Ayres, but nothing particularly exceptional. Then I read The Humans by Matt Haig. This is my first ever Matt Haig book. I gave it a 4 out of 5. It took me a little while to get into it because the main character in this is like an alien who's been sent to live amongst humans. And because he's like the narrator of the thing, it's kind of similar to that uh, Frank Herbert book where a lot of the time like it's ri weirdly written and stuff But it kind of has to be because of the nature of the book and it does get easier to read over time um, And it just did a really good job of like holding up a mirror to our society and showing us what human beings are really like Through the point of view of this like extraterrestrial dude. So yes a lot of tabs in this one review coming soon and then I read uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey by Arthur C. Clarke. So again, tab this out for review. Uh, 3.5 out of 5. I was expecting more from it, to be honest. I mean, I've never seen the movie, so I don't have that to compare it to. I know the movie is meant to be one of like the best films made of all time. Um, yeah, it was it was okay. Um, yeah, I don't, know what, I don't know what else to say to you. It's almost got like bits of historical fiction with it, at least towards the beginning, and then it becomes you know, the sci-fi that we know and love Arthur C. Clarke for. And um, there are more books in this series that I will read. Alrighty guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today. That is Termush by Sven Holm. Uh, this was originally published in the 60s in Danish and has been translated. This is a Faber Editions version with a, a foreword by Jeff Vandermeer. It's basically a dystopian, post-apocalyptic sort of 
speculative fiction, I suppose. Uh, Termush is basically like uh, it's almost it's like a hotel that has been set up uh, for people to sort of wait out the nuclear fallout and all of that stuff. And uh, so rich people sort of bought their place there, but then we we learn what happens during the actual event when like people just start showing up and so there's a lot of that really good stuff that you see in sort of post-apocalyptic stuff when actually a lot of the horror comes from the people themselves you know so uh, really well written very well translated very good book i would give it a four out of five if you're into um post-apocalyptic fiction you just got to read it i was very impressed uh, this was sent to me as well but um i loved it yeah four out of five strong one probably in the books of the quarter Hello, okay, just a couple of books to wrap up for you today. The first is The Jonah by James Herbert. This is basically like a police procedural almost novel, um, but with a bit of horror thrown in as well. It wasn't very good to be honest. Uh, there's like a twist in it, but other than that, I don't know, man. I, I wrote in my review, there's a reason why you don't see this often in the charity shops. It was just okay at best. I gave it a three out of five. I have nothing more to say about it. I only really read it to tick off some more James Herbert because I'm working my way through all of his stuff. <laughs> then I read Chickens in Your Backyard, A Beginner's Guide by Rick and Gail Lutman um, and basically this is non-fiction about raising chickens. I hope to one day have rescue chickens in the backyard. Um, I will be honest and say, well for a start this book was written and published in the 80s so I don't know whether there have been recent advancements in all of that stuff. Um, but it, it kind of put me off it a little bit because it made it sound as though raising chickens is going to be very difficult. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, it was like a three out of five again. It was just okay. I'm sure there are better books out there on raising chickens that maybe I will pick up in the future. We will see. All right, I'm going to use this in both my haul and my wrap up. Uh, just consider this as me adding one to the tally. I have a book uh, that is about a health condition uh, that I don't want to share. It is my secret book. Um, but yes, I'm reading another book slash have read another book depending upon when you're when you're seeing this All right, it is wrap-up time So the first book that I have for you is uh, Henrik Ibsen ghosts and other plays Ibsen being a famous Norwegian playwright This has ghosts a public enemy and when we dead wake all three of them were pretty good ghost was my favorite um, It has a bit with like an orphanage in it um, And they refuse to insure it because they're worried that people will then think that means they don't have faith in God to protect them So they don't insure it and then lo and behold, it burns down. Uh, who saw that coming? Uh, a public enemy is named after some of the dialogue in it. Um, it actually would more accurately translate as enemy of the people, but it would be weird to have people chanting that. And then When We Dead Wake was kind of the least memorable, but still um, interesting stuff. Uh, so yeah, I gave this overall like a 3.5 out of 5. Probably Ghost was a 4 out of 5, and the others sort of dragged it back down again. So there was that. I then read The Inheritors by William Golding. So William Golding is the author of Lord of the Flies and uh, The Inheritors, uh, it's about the meek. The meek will inherit the earth. No, it's about um, like, anth no, what am I saying? Not like prehistoric man. Uh, what's the word I want to go for here? Neanderthals, it's about Neanderthals. Um, and yeah, it's it does actually remind me of Lord of the Flies. It also reminded me of Midworld by Alan Dean Foster. Um, very beautifully written, very kind of creative. I would call it like literary fiction rather than anything. Um, just some good stuff, a 3.5 out of 5. It's quite easy to read, um, quite easy to lose yourself in. Um, and then I read Hamish and the World Stoppers by Danny Wallace. So I gave this a 4 out of 5. I believe this is the first book in the series. Basically, Hamish is this kid. He lives in uh, the fourth most boring town in the UK. And in this book, um, basically, he discovers that time is pausing, but not for everybody. Um, he's able to move about in the pauses, and a few of the other kids are as well. And they learn that these like monsters are seizing the opportunity to attack and the kids all have to try and save the world really fun stuff really creative stuff um and yes i enjoyed that there are other books in the series and i'm going to be getting to them soon Alrighty, guys just the one book to wrap up for you today and that's hamish and the never people by danny wallace so this is i guess book two in the series because it pretty much follows straight on from uh, hamish and the world stoppers again very good book four out of five this one basically follows like a parallel version of our world where we all have our opposites of the opposite gender so uh, i would have one called diane shay would have one called shane and uh, this so shadowy organization is basically wiping out the opposites and that causes the versions of us in our world to lose their minds a bit and to go a bit weird. So they do that to the Prime Minister and they're targeting the Queen and all of that stuff. 
And it's very good. It almost reminded me of Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman because of this opposite London that they go to. So yeah, it was good. Alright everybody, just the one book to update for you today. That is How to Speak Dragonese by Cressida Cowell. This is How to Train Your Dragon book number three. Um, it was okay. It's not been the best of this series. Um, I do find it to be kind of hit and miss to be honest. I mean, I know it is for children. Um, but I kind of went on to this off the back of the Danny Wallace book which was really good. And this was just okay. Uh, Hiccup was kind of annoying. And, uh, not Hiccup. Hiccup's never annoying. Uh, Toothless was kind of annoying in this, but then he reminds me of Biggie, and Biggie can kind of be annoying too. Um, but yes, just some fun stuff, fun uh, middle grade fiction. 3.5 out of 5. Alrighty, but. Rob, are you? One last. I don't know what that was. One last book for the month. This is How to Train Your Dragon, book 11, How to Betray a Dragon's Hero by Cressida Cowell. 3.5 out of 5. It was better than the last one that I read. This has also got like. It's a really interesting like texture on the cover. I don't know whether whoever had this before, they might have like. They might have peeled off the glossy cover or whatever it was. But yeah, this was more fun. It's kind of like the Twelve Labours of Hercules, but the uh, How to Train a Dragon version. Lots of great dragony stuff. Hiccup and Toothless and what's her name? Um, that lass. I like the lass. Kamikaze. Uh, she's she's up to her old tricks as well. Overall, just a good old book, really. 3.5 out of 5. So there we have it, those are all the books that I read in the month of April 2023. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of these books. If you read them, hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.